Toby? I don't think I'm anarchist. I can't like do anything that's like anarchist. Is this the younger from 1610? You understand this man? What's up your suit? Is he bleeding from his armpits? All right, my name's Obi, Obi Brown. Yeah, like he says Obi, more like the French where the H before an O is usually silent. I will probably be saying it different throughout the entire video and a whole bunch of people are gonna complain and I am sorry. For the last three years, I've been the one and only, wait, 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 wait. You think I'm gonna show you my secret identity? Come out of it. Calling yourself a hero makes you a self apologizing narcissistic oh, crap. I think that anarchists often get a bad rap, more of a bad rap from media and corporations and society. They were counter culture, counter the zeitgeist of what corporations and that huge industrial machine wants us to do. That is when I'm not playing shows, antagonizing fascists, staging unpermitted political action slash performance art pieces. A lot of us carry a good deal of anarchistic traits. Anarchists believe in the individual over the corporation, in thinking for yourself, in not allowing fear to be able to rule you. They also believe in spontaneity and liberation, in that you should be able to do what you want and the rules should only be applied if if they make sense. I'm not a role model, I was briefly a runway model. I hate the AM, I hate the CM, I hate Abels, I'm not a hero. They don't believe in just following the man because someone has said something. And I think that that works out really great, but can be difficult in order to work in a group. Wendy, you left a jump around my place. What's a jump? It's a sweater. How many sweaters do you have? And your toothbrush. Wait, what? An anarchistic's belief is to think for yourself, to question what is in front of you, to question what you believe. That takes a lot of courage. It takes also a lot to be able to go against and to be different because often that means that people are going to judge you. People that have anarchistic traits don't like to be placed inside of a box. I don't think many of us actually do. We want to be seen for the individual traits that we bring to the table, not just labeled with something because that's often very simplistic and superficial and also inaccurate. Aren't you in a band? I don't believe in consistency. I don't believe in comedy! Just I think that one of the reasons that Hobie Brown is just so beloved is because he takes over the scene. He's that one person that is the counter to Miguel and I know that it was a radioactive spider. He's not a vampire. And he has spider fangs. I know it. Or keep on mentioning it. It's probably good for the algorithm. He's sweet and kind and thoughtful and has a very good sense of humor. He looks at the world in this wry way. People that consider themselves anarchists does not mean that they have no sense of humor. Quite the opposite. I think that they look at society and can often laugh at the absurdity of things that we have to go through. And when you're looked at as different every single day, you're often much more appreciative of people that can see beyond that. We'll clear the path. You slow down that building. I'll do it but not because you told me to. And that's also a common thing, is that a lot of people that have anarchistic traits would lean more towards being more ODD, oppositional defiant disorder, or just oppositional in nature. And it's not to be difficult, but that they're not just gonna follow something because they're told to do it, but because it feels right or because it makes the most sense. It's important that we have a healthy amount of resistance to just blindly follow rules because we're told to do it. Now, people that lean more towards these traits would not have an easy time in a very strongly, highly hierarchical corporation or as a job, such as the military. There are some rules that we need to make society function. A society without any rules, actual anarchy, would actually cause a lot of people anxiety. And there are many rules that are put into place to keep people safe that make sense and make us all feel comfortable. In an area or a household or a home, without any rules at all, people can often feel hurt, misguided and that they're not really seen. You don't want to follow anything blindly, but you don't want to live in chaos either. And the studies have shown that like children that are living in a household with zero rules do not do well because remember, you are teaching and training people to be able to survive in society. This is not just a desert island. You have to interact and engage with others. So remember, your job is to prepare your children for the world. Guys, what's that? It's a metaphor for capitalism. When we make something our identity, everything becomes about that and we can see it where it isn't there. So yes, Hobie sees it as a metaphor for capitalism. I think that he's 
Um, probably being a little bit more tongue in cheek. I'm not really sure. Maybe he does see it as that. But that can happen to us that suddenly everything we see is through the lenses that we view the world in. You can see people that every single thing that comes out of their mouth is to try to push the proponents of the things that they believe. Miguel wants you back at HQ. Miles was just about to head out for all of you. I don't follow orders. Neither does he. I'm invited to HQ. Woo! <laughs> and that sigh from Hobie that he's so sad that Miles follows into this so very quickly. It's funny because Hobie talks about how it's important to be the individual and think for yourself and not to just follow the machine. But he's speaking for Miles in this scene. And Miles is exceptionally excited to be able to take a look at this for himself, even though Hobie is this like very larger than life figure that's like super cool and everyone would want to follow him because he doesn't have to follow anyone. He speaks for himself. Anyway, so good on Miles, and I think that Hobie should actually be kind of proud of him. All of us kind of carry this hypocrisy with us. And Hobie's saying like, you know, I want people to think for themselves and be the individual, but some people may want capitalism, may want to just feed the machine, to just do what everyone else does, not to have it be a fight all the time. Underneath, many of us hope that other people think the way that we do, because often we believe that we have the way, we found the reason, we found the answer, we have the right path. How are you even cooler under your mask? Hobie said before that. Wait, 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 wait. You think I'm gonna show you my secret identity? Come out of it. Then he shows his secret identity like minutes later. He doesn't want to be constrained by anyone's rules, even his own. I was just cool the whole time. And that's like the perfect answer because it's true. Coolness is actually found on the inside. It isn't just a look, it's how you carry yourself. For Hobie though, it's on the inside and it's on the outside. And I would say that Hobie is the coolest character in the Spider-Man universe. Those of you that are kind of on Team Miguel, you can like let me know. But I think that Hobie is just so neat. I love that he's counterculture. I love his look. I like the way that he carries himself. And he just steals the scene, quite literally in some cases. Bet this doesn't even do anything. Maybe it did before you ripped it out of a wall. I didn't notice it on my first watch through that Hobie keeps on just randomly taking things out of the wall and just bringing them with him, just causing chaos for chaos's sake. All of us see the world through our own lens. And so right away I was just like, well, why is he doing it? Like, why does he need to do this? And then I was like, oh yeah, anarchist. That's part of his identity. It's a bit much, isn't it? What happened to that small elite strike team? I find it really refreshing that Hobie's like, not like, ooh, wow, this is so cool, but like, oh, this is like so overdone. Why do they have to wear their wealth on their sleeve in hopes that people will be impressed? Our value has nothing to do with the things that we wear, the titles that we have, the cars that we drive. It really is the stuff that's on the inside that matters. That should be the things that we're impressed by, someone's character, not by someone's wealth or prestige. We're often drawn to that because power means control and it meant safety and it meant protection. And we thought that someone might be able to spread that wealth our way. The whole point of being Spider-Man is your independence. Being your own boss, you don't need all this. That is one of those great tenets is to be able to empower yourself. You don't need to follow a team for that sense of protection. It's often easier for us to be able to just follow someone else. There's less risk to us that if there's a mistake made, it's not on us. We don't have to make big decisions that can end up harming us emotionally or physically. That's why often people feel that safety in numbers or following someone else, especially if they're strong or charismatic. But what Hobie's saying is that you have to also understand that you don't need any of this. You can do all of these things for yourself. Well, then what is Hobie doing there? And I love his answer because I think it's so thoughtful. Why are you here? Looking out for my drummers, oh? I want to be in a band. We are actually exceptionally social. There's very few of us that truly want to be alone. Sometimes we're wanting to be alone because we're scared or we're avoidant or we have social anxiety or have had bad experiences or been hurt or harmed by others. But there's very few of us that truly don't want to have a group that we consider our own. All right, squash. Just don't enlist you know what war you're fighting. I wonder how many things he actually took. Like, I think there was like seven, <laughs> seven different scenes of him taking different things. And you, I'm just gonna try and ignore you. I just can't, I can't even. I ain't even here. Or yeah. <laughs> 
but that's the other part of it. It's difficult to work in a group and have that be cohesive because yes, it is important to sometimes question things and ask those questions, but it's really difficult, especially if you're running a group, to have someone constantly questioning you, constantly doing something outside of the lines. There are definitely some benefits to having a strong team. In certain cases, such as the military, it wouldn't really work if people didn't follow and follow immediately. Because if you're doing all of this questioning, you may not make the right decisions in the right amount of time, or you may not know the entire plan. So there's definitely a balance between both. Sometimes we can put either of these two pieces on a pedestal and believe that that is the right way, but the world is not often so black and white. Sometimes one set of ideals is important and should be applied, but you shouldn't just throw out everything that's on the opposite side. We need to look at both sides of the issue and be able to make a decision based on the situation we're in. Kid, look Stop at calling me. There we go. Hoping you're not helping. Good. It's interesting that he's not the one that does this. Miles does this. Hobie is that perfect placeholder for that question, look at, think for yourself. And I think that we all sometimes need to reflect on, I'm doing this, but should I be? And why am I really doing it? Probably what would happen though, is that even if you had a group of people that had more anarchistic ideals, they usually would follow one certain person. All of us can be influenced by someone else that we look up to and that we believe in. It's part of the way that we're made up. Humans have evolved mostly from living in a hierarchical structure. So even if the structure deals with chaos, even in chaos, there's often order. You have to keep your little day pass on, honey. I oh, you have one too. I didn't know they made those for adults. Give me a second. Mayday. Kids an anarchist. Come on, honey. It's so cute that he sees Mayday and he sees her as an anarchist. Two people can see the exact same situation and because they're looking through it in their own lenses, will see it completely differently. And describe it completely differently depending on their own specific hurts, wounds, happiness, thoughts, and experiences. We all... You guys smell that? I'm taking a crap on the establishment, I salute you. You can see the way that he's interacting with Mayday. It's so sweet and cute. And even though he's more into the individual, he really is caring for those that the people that are around him. He cares for Gwen and he holds Mayday even though she's stinky and it doesn't bother him at all. And he has this really cute interaction with her. Just for the rip back quick. I think that for many of us, especially if you have enough food to eat, to be able to think about what you truly want, what will make you happy and what feels right to you takes a lot of strength and courage. And often that takes us letting go of our fear and anxiety to be able to make those steps. And I believe that that's one of the things that Hobie exemplifies. But no, not all of us can afford to be able to do our own thing. It's one of those luxuries that some of us have and some of us don't. You want to be able to find the path that suits you to be able to live the life that you need to live. <laughs> Expanding your mind is not only a wonderful way to spot or learn how to make sense of the world, maybe not the spider sense, but you won't have to swing from the rooftops to do it. With today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. To learn a new skill, to get you prepared for whatever life has to sling at you, learn, enjoy, grow with Brilliant's ever-expanding new set of courses. Brilliant makes college-level courses available to everyone, with each course designed for high-velocity learning, so you can stay focused and reach your goals superhero fast. And Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others, so it never gets boring. And we know that learning is faster when it's fun and engaging, and it makes knowledge stick better, so you remember more easily and quickly. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math, AI, data science, neural networks, and more with new lessons added monthly. So far, I've covered their courses on algebra, logic, geometry, and I found all of them really engaging. I did their course on calculus and I found it was at the perfect pace for me. And that's what's so wonderful with Brilliant is that you can make the course to the level that you need and so you never really feel stressed. And if you're having problems or need to slow it down, they have all of these smaller steps that you can break things down into, which makes learning at your own pace so much easier and without any stress. They also have new courses on how technology works and thinking in code. 
If you're still not sure, why don't you just try Brilliant out and everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just head on over and visit brilliant.org slash georgiedow or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on that button on the screen or head on over to brilliant.org slash georgiedow. Clicking on that button really does help out this channel and thank you to you and Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So that's my thoughts on Hobie Brown and why he is so beloved and a little bit on what anarchism is and how we might see it in the world around us. You can let me know your thoughts and are you more on the Hobie side or Miguel or maybe both? Let me know in the comments below and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.